I just, that's I just a saw lobster trout. Huh? That's a lobster trout. Yeah, he's allowed to hunt here. You can hunt here. This, this right in here is a beautiful dive on this reef here. It's real shallow and everything. But let's see how clear the water is here. I'm gonna go dive it again. Yep. Hang on. No, you're a submarine captain, for God's sake. You're not a oh, diver. Like diver. Hey, right you got to be certified around these guys to say you're a diver. So That's you can right kiss now. their butt. Get up a little bit. That looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks Where are we? We're, we're in uh, Lovato Bay. Lovato Bay. <laughs> this is where all the surfers surf. We usually call me all kinds of names when I put in here, even though I don't have surfers on. Well, that's the Lovato Bay. Hey, we'll shoot them if they, if they call us. Would you, would, we'll let's turn the let's camera around the marine man and see if it's clear there. Okay. I don't mind, is it? You guys don't mind. This marine land is supposed to be awesome for photography. Yeah, they got some beautiful spots in. Oh, uh, who tells me that is uh, 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 Christian? Yeah, he goes there a lot. Yeah, they do beach entry. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't mind beach entry, but then it's I want one of these cameras. Yeah, right. I used to carry a couple of tanks down that damn cliff right every there. morning. Yeah, it's actually yeah. a sandy bottom yeah. and little patches yeah. of rock yeah. and, and, and grass and stuff like that. I know, I know inside there's a lot of eel grass inside. Yeah, close to the shark. Yeah. I swear, you know why that looks like a lobster trap? It's got a stick in it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, what you're You know, Linda, if you can name drop, that. if you can take the mind shot to someplace that he's never seen, <laughs> you definitely want the I cameras to be rolling when you take him someplace he's really? never been. I think Bob knows more about this area than I you will really ever know. You really gotta watch it. There's a rock here you can hit. Yeah. And the, the Avalon, not the Avalon there, but an Avalon that was a tour boat yeah. out of, out of, um, uh, Maria Del Rey came in here and the, the deck and says, Captain, you're running over a lobster trap. Well, I hope so. I hate those damn lobster fishermen. And he ran into this rock. <laughs> he ran into the rock. He dropped off a great big outboard pod, you know, that yeah. came in with the propeller and everything. And Roger has got the job of retrieving. We came out here, picked it up and put it right there to throw it in the deep harbor. We never even got a picture on that. Did you pass it in water? Picture on what? We never got a picture of towing it or anything or underwater anything. He tells me about the inner tubes, which I thought was, you know, interesting in the first part. But then he tells me that they cut the valve core out anyway, that and that they put it on the trip. side. They put the webbing on the bottom. You know what I'll do is get an inner tube, put a piece of webbing on it, put a hook on it, and then explain everything about it. Nobody yeah. understands it. Well, I'm just saying is, well, you would think that, you know, you'd have a normal stem on it or something, right? But he'd cut a hole in it, they'd fill it up with air, but the novelty of it was, he'd put the hole on the side, so as Half it came up. up, it would bleed off the air, so you'd get the ascent that you wanted, but he was sensitive to the, the changing pressures, is that he wanted it to have less buoyancy near the top, so when it got up where the waves were, that it wouldn't scuttle itself, and it would basically start to hover as it got near the top, it would because very, very it would bleed like, off, it would bleed off the air. The 140 inner tubes on the, uh, the uh, Emerald, I went out and bought 50 more inner tubes before you put the last 40 on. I thought we had underestimated because it had a 20,000 pound field. And all you had to do is lift that, that was 14,000 pounds of water, the water display. And then the uh, motor itself would lift the machinery and the motor and stuff like that. And we cut the mask off, so that made that, that not very difficult. If you leave the mask on, it's a wooden mask, you get a surface before this whole over. You have to start over. And so, uh, it came up so slow, I went down and we had a war stove upside down. And I got my brother, we went up there to eat and took the mouthpiece cool. out. And, uh, Calls it a phone booth. Called it a phone booth, and I said, let's put some more on the stern. The valve started to bob a little bit. So I had 10 inner tubes, five on each side. Uh, and you can't carry, like, you can't say, we use 55 gallon drums. Well, they lift about 500 pounds, but it wasn't yeah. excuse all this long. And it's going to come up and hurt somebody. We had an inner tube take off and break any kidding on your name. And we lost, I think, four inner tubes on that whole exercise, and we towed it all the way to San Diego with the inner tube that closed. So that, the phone was up, and the inner tube was still hanging on the outside. Uh, how deep was it? Huh? How deep was that? Water? Water? How deep were you working? 45, right on the end of the water. Yeah. But I asked him if anybody had ever done that before. He said, no. nobody had ever lived one with the inner tube. And then I asked him about the parachutes. And he says that sometimes the current will collapse the parachute, and then he said you're screwed. And he said besides, he goes, I use a, a dollar fifty inner tube. He goes, the parachutes are a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> we shot up, we shot up a couch with an anchor on it and a stereo, <laughs> and uh, we under where we stood there and watched it go up, and the parachute folded over, and it came right back down and pinned into the bottom. 
And he had told him not to get underneath it. I told him, don't ever get underneath it. <laughs> and he didn't listen. He one time for the neck time, and he said, we're going to salvage the boat over in Catalina. Huh? And, you know, you guys are dead this. And I said, well, I said, what was it? He says, it's a big ski boat. And I said, do not hook on to the ski line, because it isn't strong enough to lift the boat. And the hatch is undoubtedly blown off. The engine is all the way to that lifting guys. So lift from that. Connect with those real easy. Submarine. So they lift it from the ski line. Today here with her pigtails and her, and her little her little outfit, getting ready to go dive with you. Doesn't she? Good looking gal, a good representative of the company, and the highest certified person. Hey, they're not signing off on the Catalina trip, Bob. This is an extra trip. She went to, I took her to Catalina. She had a really good was time. Was the water clear? It was okay. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't really great. It was one of those big swells we're coming in. Yeah. About two or three weeks Later ago. Later on, they don't get that Yeah. What'd she do? She did really great. Actually, she, um, I pointed her. Um, Barbie uh, has gone over there as a part of that. And kind of helped us work. I gotta see if you can look up that, uh, that company there on the internet. Or the, uh, uh, sure. It's, uh, hold on, let me get something. Nine, six, yeah. Four, yeah. Four, yeah. yeah, and then finally she decided her daughter, she bid on this auction, and it was two lessons, so she got one for her daughter, one for her brother, and then she decided to go to the home course. Oh, I know that. Probably the best thing. So, and it was great. She did a really, really good job. Yeah. So. Do you think she married up, or did she uh, make her own money? Because she was on Hee Haw, she was a kind yeah. She made her own money, but I think I bet she married well too, though. I guarantee she went with enough guys that really uh, told her how to invest her money and everything. Yeah. That's the whole dairy thing. But she's 56 years old now, dude. But I'll tell you, there's a there's a time when she was smoking hot, that girl. I mean, where she sizzled walking down the street. No, but you know what it was? I think I think uh, I think Hefner was smart enough to basically hunt her down because. The notoriety of being in Playboy was kind of infamy at first. Now it's no big deal. And the thing is, he was looking for quality women to get in that magazine. As a matter of fact, one of the, this Janet Pilgrim girl that was one of his uh, uh, three-time playmates, oh, yeah. she was his secretary. One of the best gals in Playboy was Jimmy Connors' wife. Oh yeah, yeah, Patty uh, McGuire. She was absolutely spectacular. She was she was the playmate in the Jimmy Carter interview uh, I mean, issue. You could just look at her face. That's that was very. All of them got good body, but her face was just absolutely. And I wonder. I think he's still married. To her. May, yeah, I think he probably he might because he has a bunch of children with her. He's going to teach somebody. He's, he's going to be. Uh, the coach for uh, Andy Roddick. Andy Roddick? Yeah, Andy Roddick. But Andy Roddick is a pro. But he's a pro already, though. Yeah, I know, but he needs a coach. Oh, really? Coach, yes, isn't he good? I don't know. Well, you know what's funny? I, I think I told talent, you. The, but he doesn't win the contest. I worked for the volleyball association, and the mother was, uh, uh, her name's Ann Davenport. Her youngest daughter is Lindsay Davenport, the tennis player. Yeah. And she was telling me that she was hanging out with Pete Sampras' mother, yeah. and they had kind of a crappy coach, manager, right? So that she called her up and said, uh, the guy that used to be Arnold Palmer's uh, uh, lawyer, this guy named McHugh or something, he's the biggest sports uh, attorney in the world, they basically bought her out of her contract before she won the Olympics, and her career took off. You know, the, the uh, what is it, the, the one in PV, the tennis club? 
What's what's the name Kramer. of it? Yeah, Jack Kramer. That's the that's the, the hottest place in the world for for cultivated yeah, they, they got new gal coming up up there. Yeah. It's gonna be really really tough. And the same coach as Coach Jeff, Pete Sampers, Tracy Olson, Austin. Yeah. Um, Davenport. Do you know Davenport's? No. Yeah, because Tracy Austin, that uh, sushi place I do the website for, he plays doubles in her tournament, and that she she's very well connected in PV. Tracy Austin still. Wash rock over there. Oh. I heard when the when the Spanish or whoever first came here, yeah. it was really really foggy. They saw that rock. Yeah. And they, they they didn't know there was land right here, so they just put it down as an island. <laughs> because it was that foggy. Now they every morning and spear yellow cake. And I speared two at one here, once at one time. And she had my two and him done. Wow. And uh, Billy had never get up and come with us, so one morning. Uh, they were all going, and Bill got up and went, and I said, I'm not going. <laughs> he speared a couple of yellowtails, and he jumped in at Haggerty's, and he speared two big whites. He had one about 47 pounds. But they were sleeping the kill. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, Then we came out here, and, and uh, we knew there were a lot of anchors on the bottom, because you could see them skin diving. So we put on double tanks, and we all made a sweep, and we had lots of my market boys in a bag. I use a little piece of thin line, and uh, on the big ones, on the small ones, you can pull up. We put a certain color line on that. On the big ones, we put a thinner line, so you knew that was a big anchor, so we had to go down and dive in. So we had all these, and they were um, they were floats from um, gas tanks on uh, airplanes. And I bought them at North American Aviation. And we put them together, and I dipped them in plastic. We made a very good orange uh, dumbbell buoy. The rough line around their 100 foot line, and then we put them all up. and Here's all our red buoys all over the <laughs> We had probably 30 anchors. Really? Good damn. We had lunch, and the current came up, and they all disappeared. And then they all get tangled up in the, in the rock. They didn't come back up. Oh. <laughs> Fish that he gets and everything, and you know, yellowtail's a big deal. But so you like thresher shark better than anything you've ever eaten? Thresher shark is the best best fish I've ever eaten. And do you catch it around here? Yeah, you catch it around here. But how big is it? Oh, sometimes you get up to 250 pounds. Really? A great big long tail on it. So uh, sushi fish all over the I ate four pieces of that one night. No, uh, ah, sure, I'm not eating that. That's the best fish I've ever eaten. And I heard years ago that when they have their big party at the end of the year, at Christmas, they'll have swordfish, and they have bacon shark, and they have thresher shark. And everybody eats a thresher shark. The maple shark and the swordfish is last. Do you grill it? I don't like shark. I, I had some good swordfish the other night because they marinated the heck out of it before they Now, who's the guy that has the, the really cool uh, uh, swordfish boat now? That's Hap Jacobs? Hap Jacobs, yeah. I was talking to him the other night about it. Oh, cool. So Bob's already tied up uh, Hap Jacobs and he's looking to hunt down Bev Morgan so they can talk about the, the earliest beginnings of the dive and surf legacy. So Bob, you were head of dive operations, effectively. You were the guy that had the most certifications, more than your brother, right? Oh, my brother was never certified to teach. Yeah. So in other words, Linda is the heir apparent to your dynasty of teaching people to scuba here, right? Yeah. Yeah? So you're kind of passing the torch over to her officially by diving with her today. You think she can get a raise from the company after this? <laughs> Am I, am I going diving again here pretty soon? I'm so I think you'll have a nice boat this today. You better. It looks like there's pretty calm in there. That's a diving there. Hey, I want to meet I want to meet the pretty boy movie star that gets to be in the dive and surf movie though. He must be gorgeous for them to have him Is doing. An instructor for us? Yeah, I just I just made him an instructor. Uh, he wants I mean, is he gorgeous? Is he drop dead gorgeous? And the company's going to make millions off this movie. Huh? Is he Brad? Is he Brad Pitt incarnate? Is he just so beautiful that they have to use him? <laughs> I'm teasing her. I got the camera on her. I don't know. I, you know, I probably met him. Yeah, he's getting so I can't remember anybody's name. Yeah. What's my name? My brother before he got. Bill. He's straight. Who the hell are you? Bob, you asked me. <laughs> Do I know you? Tell them about the shirt you I said. Mean, you know me. 
What would when would I have met you? <laughs> well, just get madder and yell, and then he, ah, he starts laughing. He's getting me. <laughs> what did your shirt say? I'm not. I'm not Bill. I'm Bob. Would you? I used to wear that. Yeah. So what did it say? Before he was married, he was going out with quite a few gals. And, uh, what about after he was married? Ha! Ah, no. <laughs> Tell them other people you don't like that you dropped off here and were never seen again, Bob. I hate, I hate <laughs> beach diving? I don't like beach diving at all. That's all I do. There's only one thing better than beach diving, that's diving from a There's only one thing better than boat diving, that's diving from a boat with a scooter. <laughs> hey, hey, just a minute, let me turn it around. You got any scooters uh, warmed up no, here? I don't. I sold them he all. He sold them all. So you guys are going to have to work I on... Sold $200 worth of He says the people over at uh, uh, the Body Glove Wetsuit Factory tells the girl, he goes, make them twice as powerful and charge twice as much money for them. <laughs> I'm sure they can My friend that. John has four of the Apollos. Oh, really? Yeah, he yeah. has four. Is it the one that have the handles up on the front? Yeah, the, the yellow ones yeah. with the... Those I, I are nice. Yeah, those I don't care really. for those as much as my Oceanics. Oceanics are much more powerful and longer than rocket. Hey, Bob, Linda's starting to reconcile herself to this. That little bit of anxiety is now with the kind of like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? The camera's pointed at me. Well, we're ready. Right. This is probably about as good as we're going to do. Just as good as it gets. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, pull your camera up. I'll put my camera from around the damn place. So now, does she have to keep this secret, or can she bring the regular riffraff here? Just the regular scumbags can come here. This isn't anything special that you want to keep secret? This is by everybody. everyone comes here. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, for God's sakes. I smart-ass this guy constantly. You know what happens when I smart-ass him? He tries to one-up me, and he starts trying to tell better stories and stuff like that. And I interrupt him every once in a while, and occasionally he'll, he'll just more adamantly tell the story. Oh, I, I didn't tell you guys what I was doing yesterday. I was taking... I, I told you. I was taking pictures of bondage furniture, and they brought these two lesbian girls over to sit on the, on the bondage furniture for me to take pictures of their legs and stuff. And then this other girl came, and I had to shoot pictures of her. No, no, no. It's not porno. I, I refuse to do porno. I said there's no good reason for it. It's all, it's all uh, you know, uh, uh, pertinent to selling... Sell, yeah, selling paraphernalia. No, beautiful pictures. The studio thing. I, it was beautiful, Bob. My lights work wonderfully, and I cast them correctly, and I diffuse them good, and I made her look beautiful. I'll show you the pictures I got on my laptop. She looks beautiful. But I did that until 12 o'clock at night, and then I came over here, and I was rendering the video all night long. I got about two hours sleep. I came, I came Hugh Hefner's wife for a calendar, and she did it, and she didn't like the pictures, so we never did anything with it. But we owed them a shoot on the boat, see, in return, because we thought they were going to use that calendar. And uh, so... They brought down two good-looking gals, and we started to Catalina. They both got seasick. Uh -oh. Came around here and parked in Portuguese vans. It was nice and calm all day. And so I'm in there making sandwiches, and I see the gals walking around with no top on. See, I get out there, they don't have a bottom or anything, and they're totally stark naked for this shoot. And they took a lot of pictures, and then I got into directing. I had to go up on the wheelhouse and get out on the bow pump. The guy was an idiot that took the pictures. And so... Uh, we ate, uh, I served them all sandwiches, and then I sat down and I talked in a chair and I had a sandwich. And they put their shorts on, but they left their tops off. And so Scott Daly and them talked, one of the gals come in and sat on my lap and took, gave me a kiss on the cheek, and they took a picture of it and sent it to Patty. And she just laughed, and they told me, they thought they were really going to get me in trouble. Uh -huh. We'll put the swim ladder in. 
Okay, because it'll be easier for you and easier for me to get out. Where's the ladder? It takes me forever to get the Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so you're saying it's a good fit? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's what it is, really. I got something out here that'll make it easy for you to get that thing on. I just got my shoes wet. Damn it. What? You're already dressed. Oh, I don't fool around. You don't fool around, huh? Nope. Well, I do. You got it all day. Take your time. I just discovered these at the show. This is the first time you've been, you've been uh, diving on this boat, isn't it? I just yeah. got my knees wet. You just discovered uh, those at the show and bar fair, huh? Uh, yeah. Pretty nice, huh? Some old guy was there and he says, you know what, I made one for myself and went on a dive boat. Several people wanted them, so they, they asked me and I made them for them, right? Yeah. And he says, 500, 500 of them later, they had 50 bucks a pop. No, anything you don't want, I'll cut it out for you. Yeah, that's a nice piece of change, yeah. Hey, they work great. So you're the heir apparent, see? I got it on tape, see? What's that? He was, he was head of dive operations. Now you are. You can feel the tension a little bit, it's but really nice. Tired. No, it's just right. Well, there's three different sizes. You're supposed to measure yourself. And you send them the the, the, the measurement, and it puts you in a certain a certain category. You know, these are some old ones. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And he's already sold 500 of them at, five, at 50 bucks a piece. It's to your man. Was he at the show? Yes, he was. Yes, sir. That's not too bad. And that's the only product he sells. That, well, yeah, that's the only one that he actually made. Yeah. 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 And I don't know how they survive on one product. Well, the guy's an old retired guy, but he ought to sell it off to somebody to get a royalty. <laughs> I, think, I think there's several companies making, making them now. Just like that? Or you didn't yeah. get a patent on it, huh? Yeah, I, I guess not. Okay, which one do you want me to use? Thank what? You. Any of them. Oh. Well, I think that's the end. I like I like the one that sinks and full floats my tank. That's the one I like. I'm trying to find my other blue glove. Damn it. This brand new wetsuit they just turned you on to. Huh? You guys don't get snagged on the feet of this thing because uh, we're not taking them off for this, so don't get don't get caught on this thing. Okay, now it's going to go in the water. So that's what's Cause that way, that, yeah, because you can get an option. Yeah, see, if I put you in some high heels, I got a lot of practice yesterday. I can make you look really good. I can light you up really nice. Hey, what does it look like on the screen, Bob? The TV. The black and white TV? Well, it's stable. That's the main thing. I got the, I got the top one being taped. Now I can click this back into here. The yellow one. Okay, got it. Those bastards. Okay. No, I'm not going to go diving. I can't go in the water. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Exposure. Okay, see you, bye. There we go. Yep. Another one in a minute. Sure. And let's talk to 
him about what he wants to do and kind of get a direction so you don't just get lost and, and review a bunch of signals. All you divers remember, nobody wants to see fins. So if I'm trying to keep up with you guys, that's not a good thing. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we should, we should kind of talk about all that before we just get in and then don't get one more. Billy, do me a favor. Uh, look at that camera and tell me if I turn it the right way. Right. 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 It's, it's legit. Puyacle. Right you know Puyacle Beat, Puyacle Reed? Right there. They put up. I think my grandchildren use my good booty. Oh, wow. Is it more straight? I'm stuck with these old ones. Sorry. I mean, many a guy out here without fins and booties and the hood. <laughs> What's the most the important strength? piece of dive equipment you have in your bag? Well, if you're missing Ray? any piece, yeah. you can't go. Yes, you can. You can go without pins. Well, no. <laughs> I have some of the best dives I've ever been on without pins. Your tank. Huh? <laughs> your no. tank. <laughs> no. That's not it. Keep guessing, you guys. Keep guessing. Huh? Face mask. Face mask. That's it. You can't have a good time. That's that. going to be my first guess, but you told me you can make your own, so I thought, yeah, well, you, you can't, know that. You can't see horizontally. Uh -huh. You can only see vertical. But if you don't have any air, you can't do anything. Well, you can go start Uh-huh. Right? You, got, you want a scooter? You can take a scooter? He no. sold them all. He sold them all. You should have fixed them, man. Four really? scooters. I, gotta fix, I should fix my own. All right. You can't afford a bath. Dude, I'd go in the water with a scooter. Yes. You do what I did. I made a bracket that mounts my camera to the scooter. Yeah. That's great. Now this is a knife that I designed. And so one of our engineers <coughs> got a patent pending on it, put it in his name. No nice. longer with us. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> Look at this knife. He didn't design the, I, I told him how to do it, and he didn't design the way I wanted it. You unscrew this little thing here, see? <coughs> it becomes an abalone bar. You slide the knife to it, yeah. Cool. No wonder he did You can hammer the hell out of it. So that is the prototype? Huh? That's the prototype? Well, we, we made these, but um, just nobody had any faith in them to sell them. And so, just like my marker buoy, nobody really could sell my tool. marker buoy at the show. They couldn't sell a marker buoy. That's great. Hmm? Did they break it? Pull it. Oh, I'm sure Linda's oh, going to get sick on. of this organization pretty quick. I want to come and work straight for you anyway. Is that neat? How much did that go for? You know what? Um, At that time, it sold for 75 bucks. Now, that's 75 and nothing. Yeah. So, you also, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a hammer, though, too. The weight of it allows you to pound on stuff, too. Can you pound on stuff with the base? Oh, can you? Up a rock with it. I'm saying that's part of the novelty of that, right? Yeah. So it's really more of a dive tool than it is a knife, right? Here, pull out on it. Here. Better pull out on those things. Oh, oh, pull out. Oh, okay. I was pressing. You like that? Yeah, I like this. Very cool. So, Linda, do a lot of the boats that you uh, that you dive off of, even though they're smaller, do they got a pretty good area in the back like this? 
Or is this as big as it gets? Uh, no, there's there's other boats that are designed for diving. That are significant, this tail part, and even yeah, though they got a yeah. smaller cabin? Yeah. Linda, you've never seen this before, have you? Put your snorkel in here like this, and that's where you carry it. All right. <laughs> it scares me that when it floats in front of my face, Blaine, it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it you? It tells the me. The snorkel doesn't scare you when it gets in front of you? No. It oh, doesn't. you. It doesn't go in front of me. Where does it go? Well, I keep it on the right side because everybody is training on the left, but I, I, I learned on the right side. I can't seem to switch it over, so it just stays on the right side. and. It's, it's not uh, it's regular air. The bellows oh, bottom. So that is sure you can get to it. Well, you see? So no, you program that. It just hangs straight so down over here easy. out of the way. It's yeah. Kind of, it's kind of a neat idea. I programmed, I programmed that. Just Pretty good idea, wasn't it, Bob? Yeah. So I would program if I was using rich air mix gas, I would program it to say 36, 32. You don't die with this. Nice what, you when want you me to clean up? Gear, <laughs> you take your gear off, you get home, it's half full. Oh my god, it's ancient. Oh. Probably older than I am. That's for a kid in the real okay. summer. Is this a note? The lettering, the writing is here. Oh. Hey, you look good in that. Can you figure out why nobody uses it? <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> the the outside, yeah. Oh my. <laughs> This is cool. That's cool. This is cool. I like that. You can make that up. Here, with him. Can you say that again? Forget <laughs> it. Yes. Some Garibaldi yes. around and yeah. stuff. Oh, that's yes. great stuff. Yes. You know, life is nice, huh? Oh, yeah. We I'm never, uh, somebody else would really like it. Yes. We never yes. talked about I don't take uh, games, so I don't care. We, we, we were talking uh, about your, your you signature on their line building. Yeah. You think we can get a patent? Patent, yeah, patent everything on that? Unless the, uh, the guy just, already did it once. Well, no, he did it. Um, if you have a form, just go ahead and do it. I can, you know, I can everything needs to be valid within on one year's time. So I well, believe they signed all the forms. Hey, Bob, can you get your buddy here, Ray, a good deal so he can get out of that junk wetsuit and get body gloves? It's still valid up until July 12th or this year. I mean, for God's sakes. If you want to sign them all over again, you can do that. Yeah, this is the... We can have a body glove for right here. Hey, I don't care about XL. There's a free suit. Hey, that's all they ever did. They never really made no, anybody uh, any suit, again. so they just put their logos on it. Paper, sign another oh, signature, I, I get and out by myself. Oh. And guess what? Oh, nice back, huh? Jack will draw. He says this is probably the last time you're ever going to get your your um, Mark Five Mark Five overhaul because uh, Scuba Pro won't sell me parts. Oh. Yeah. So I'm thinking about saying, you know, here I've helped build the Scuba Pro company. I followed Dick Bone into every place he ever went. Healthways, Sportsways, uh, and then Scuba Pro. And uh, now, the only person I, I uh, trust to repair my regulator is Jocko, and they won't sell his part to repair my regulators. Why won't they do that? Well, they said we're not a dealer. I bet you you can what? get... I I bet you I can find a way to get parts. Well, I talked to my friend John. To yeah. My friend John has a direct... Friend connection yeah. to, to uh, Scuba Pro. Yeah. To get you all the parts you want. Well, I Don't talked to the rep and she said, Well, you're no longer a dealer. And she said, The last time I set up a meeting down there, uh, nobody even showed up. And I had the company president with me. And that was, uh, that was when John. And you know, he's going to keep bad mouthing that company until they give him what he wants. <laughs> he's not going to give up, you know. Okay, we were, we're going to have some sort of a. Uh, a planned talk here, and the dive master is going to kind of kind of formulate a plan, and, yeah. and uh, this gentleman here is going to come up with any ideas that he has. Stay together. I don't have any ideas. Well, I mean, I, if, you know. if we don't stay together, I'll get my handcuffs out. That's guaranteed sure if our method to stay together. Okay. okay. No, I'm a, I'm a stay together kind of guy. Well, we're just going to uh, go down the swim step here. Uh, well, the only thing I ask is the film person, and I've already told the young lady that Video, videotaping fins does not work. No. Okay. You mean no back so side. if you guys are going to kind of turn away, let me go to one side or another so I can get side shots of you guys swimming, not you know, this, this fin shots.
a Hollywood documentary that's going to win all the prizes. Oh, you think? <laughs> oh, my God. So whatever you do, be charming and look yeah, good, yeah. whatever you're Other doing. Other than that, I, and just, I just keep shooting. So if you guys aren't back in the house, I'll one of those tanks. I missed my photo down. opportunity yeah, with the faceplate. Yeah. Can you do that again for me? I, I no, I can, no, I got you on tape. I can, you look I bet good. I could sell a hundred of those. Yeah. Actually, Everybody wants that face <laughs> They don't like the exhaust valve. I don't like an exhaust valve. Yeah. And I would never let anybody in our class use one. Because I think it's a bad thing to set. They want to buy one after they get on the class fine. Bigger blue one, I need And learn how to clear a face paint without a purge valve. Thank you. And then... Um, and I have people clear their face plates 50, 60, 100 times before they get out of my class. Mm -hmm. I used to take and I tell them, not even put the strap on. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, when I tap, I bleed a lot. When I tap my tank, and you have to take your face plate on hand with the person, so everybody gets a chance to clear 10, clap, 10 face plates in a room at night and one dive. Right. And you just leave them on there. You don't use your straps at all. Just leave them on. They'll stay on. Yeah, I may, I dove a whole day without a strap. Because one guy said, well, I can't go in the water and have a strap. I said, I'll put a piece of strap. No, I don't trust that. I gave him my strap. He said, what are you going to do? I said, nothing. But you got some sort of silver oxide in it. No, I don't know what. It's like a rubbery paint, but it's it's definitely solar reflective. Got a, uh, but you can do without pens, you can do without a snorkel, you can do without a wetsuit, you can do without a tank, you can do without a regulator, you see, but you can't do anything without a face I saw the stripped down version for the uh, for the zincs, but man, you got your paraphernalia down pretty good. Right. Your knife and your thing there? That's cool. Nobody wears their snorkel there anymore, are no, you? Yeah? Yeah, because it doesn't get in front of your face plate and scare you. Oh shit, man, it's out of the way. No, I got the area, but it's just always in the way. We'll see how. Uh, Most people have a regulator. Ray Hammond. Since he's got it down pat, it doesn't scare him at all. So mad about losing my eyes. Now be gentle on him, though, Bob. Remember, they're dealing, they're diving with the legend. This is a career-making dive for them. They'll be talking about this until their dying days, the day they got to dive with you. Now, Linda, you got the really cool body glove bag. Do you have the coolest paraphernalia of anybody? I mean, is all your apparatus and all your stuff? No, I'm serious. Are you really into it? Yeah. I'd say she's into it. She's a, uh, it's teaches people to teach people. That's First time she's extraordinaire. There you go. Heir apparent to the Maestral uh, the Maestral it. Dynasty. Huh? It's a whistle. That. No, yeah, this. Oh, this is for um, blowing stuff up. Purging. No. no. This what? one, hit it. That one? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, noise maker. Yeah. That is like, hey, noise I'm over maker. here. Yeah. Ignore me. Forget the whistle. Now, loud noises What's like that, that, does that, does that deter sharks or potentially attract them? Well, if you're over there, nobody can see you because it's rough. You can like that a signal on your bike? Yeah. Underwater, does it work? Yeah. Underwater works too? Yeah. yeah. Really oh, yeah, it would do you a lot of good when you're on the surface, Billy. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it is for if you're far away. And you're yeah, good. too, but I'd say mo most of this gear yeah. is primarily concerned for being underwater. <laughs> you know the deal, if you hear something like that, you need to close your eyes and then you point to where the sound is. It's like, I don't know, something subconscious or something. So, Bob, what, you're filling that up for what reason? To put our gear in when we come out. Oh, okay. And now that's the kind of weight belt that you've used for a long time? I use that one. I use another kind. That... What about the ones that have the, like, the square ones, the square weights? Well, I, I use those. They're, they're rectangular. Rectangular, yeah. yeah. I like those, and I like them because you can get them to come off in the least. You have to take this whole build apart to get a wheel off. So why do you like that kind? Uh, the, square, the square one? No, the rounder one. Well, I like that because it's down there. I used it the other day and it's perfect weight. Oh, okay. He's been wanting me to go over to Hilo to help him finish his house and go over the house. So buoyancy compensator is also a safety device if you become incapacitated and can't make it to the surface. You just blow it up it's like an elevator. You use it to go down. You use it to come up. Plus, when you if you dive to the to against the current, you're super fatigued. It gives you the opportunity to conserve energy. When you go down, your suit compresses. Yeah. So you lose your buoyancy. At 225 feet, we didn't wear a weight belt or anything, and we could walk around on the bottom. Yeah. So we were crawling on the bottom most of the time, kicking with our fins. Yeah. And uh, so when you come up, you're too buoyant because you use all the air out of the tanks, 
that tank weighs six pounds more full of air, air than it does empty. So when it when it's full, it goes down. When it's empty, it comes up, which is the idea. Now, system. what's the deal on the yellow and the blue gov? Is that kind of a Michael Jackson well, I thing? I couldn't find the other blue gov. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody ripped I it off. I have a bunch of those. <laughs> you do? You know what we use them for at work? <laughs> They're great gloves. For handling hot ice. Oh, really? That's what they use them for. I, I con the guy I'm out gonna of it. I'm going to try one I of each and see which one I like the best. Lube and I just found these. What does hot ice mean? Where did I buy these? Hot ice. And the, and the guys that oh, handle the food. Hardware. Oh, 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 all the food is packed in hot ice. <laughs> well, I don't understand. What does that mean, though? Hot ice, you know. Uh, what do you call it? Dry, dry ice. Dry ice. Oh, dry ice. Yeah. Yeah, I call it hot because it burns. Yeah, it does burn. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's what they pack the food in when they bring it onto the airplane. So to handle that, they got these these neat gloves. You know, that's going to become all the rage now, Bob. The yellow with the blue glove. Oh my God. Fashion that's going to become a, a, a body glove a staple that you got. That's the mind scroll version. Right here. So what kind Isn't of um, hand signals? Are Whose is this one? Use? Okay. Yep. I'm in trouble. I'm in double trouble. Yep. Stay. Yep. I'm out of here. Yep. Okay. Uh, How about I want to do a safety stop. I don't know what that is. What <laughs> five mean? meters, three okay. minutes. This we means level up. Danger. Okay. <laughs> five meters. Yep. <laughs> That means five meters. Okay. okay. <laughs> How about um, I'm you low on air or I'm running out I'm of air? I'm low on air. I always come this. Way. How, How about yeah. how do you flash your signals for how much air you have? I, I never do. How okay. about like we My do this? My friend John goes like that. Low on air. Yeah. yeah. Or on halfway air. through our tank. I don't pay any attention. To that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I usually look at him and go. I never look at the gauge. I'm, until it gets hard and then I come you, up. You got it. Okay. She's good at that. That's pretty good. You know, I've never heard somebody go that. Well, around. she got to teach all of that. Yeah. The insurance reason. What okay, so what basically, how long? How long you guys want to stay down? Five meters. Generally. Three. What's that about? Five meters for three minutes, and yeah. we'll, well stay there. Do I, could, I could be done with that tank here for an oh, hour and a half. Oh, oh, oh. come on. So. Okay. Well, that's what I mean. I'm just saying, is you guys, you guys are going to signal each other when you're down there when you want to come up, or are you going yeah, to stay? I'll come up whenever they come up. Cool. The way I yeah. buddy dive, I usually like the person to stay on my left. Okay, I'll stay on your left. You stay on my right, and then we can see each other. If you're in front of me, I'm a leader. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to kick you. Okay. <laughs> if you get in back of me, I'm going to kick you as many times as I can. <laughs> okay. If you're on top of me, I, you're not supposed to be there. So I'd like to see you on my left. On if your, I'm not on okay. your right, we're lost. We'll come to the surface and join. Okay, I'll stay on your left. And I'll be okay. just off a little bit to the left or yeah. to the right or in the front, not in the back, hopefully. Okay, so I'm just going to let you leave. Huh? I'm just going to let you leave. I don't care. We can both leave. Because okay. if you got both divers this way, you got four hours. Yeah. And if you see some, call me and I'll go that way. If I see some, I'll go this way. Okay. Don't you want a professional goo for that? No, I, just, <laughs> I should, should, I should. Yeah. Should. yeah. We sell it. Where is it? Give I it. So. Now, what's this one here for? Huh? This is a spare? That's for snorkeling. Oh, but, okay. I'm going to leave it up here because I always wow. keep an emergency face paint. One of the kids used it the other day. Oh, cool. Professional goo. Put some professional goo in there. This is a trap. I I taught a gal one night, I used to say, and you just spit in your mask. And if, if you're a little squeamish about it, it's it. around your nose. She says, if, you, if you're, oh, wait, I said, if you're a little it. squeamish about that, bring it over and I'll spin. This guy would bring her face paint over every night and have me spin it. <laughs> it's Gordon South, our mechanic's uh, wife. He doesn't have her anymore. He just won the lottery. He won $13 million. Wow. Oh, that's. Boy, well, I would love that. Put your camera in there. Uh, no, thank you. Why? Because I can't get that port scratched at all. Well, there ain't going to be nothing else in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just fresh no, put your camera in there okay. first. That's great. When you oh. hand it to him, have him put it right in there. Yeah, yeah. And let it soak until we come out. Yeah, that's great. This yeah. stuff says yeah. it's yeah. higher. You get something. Oh, get some higher. Can you move that camera oh, there? there? Sure. Gotta get in. <laughs> well, what I do is I get my fins on, I sit down there, and then somebody you put your tank here, and then you turn around backwards so you don't hit my hole right here, okay? And scoot across where you want to and fall off the boat. Anything. Now be careful about the feet on that camera thing because we didn't pull the legs off of it. Remember, Bob? Okay. Right. okay. Bob, you don't have any of this on board. What's that? Any of this? No. I'm gonna give you this. I'll get some. You have this whole bottle. All right. You know she's gonna hunt down one of those masks, Bob. Rip it out of there so we don't catch it at this flat. I know you got the you got the cool color uh, colored wetsuit. I like that. I asked him if he ever went for anything oh, other than black. He kind of went Henry Ford. No way. 
Mm-hmm. There's a picture of him on the Easy Reader where he's wearing a colored one, but he said he didn't go for that. Did you agonize over the style of, of wetsuit to get? No. The color? I get no. That just comes, I think, this one color. What well, might come in all black? I got blue. So in other words, you had to have some color. Yeah. There you go. No. You know, I want to meet this Adonis instructor, man. I want to meet the guy that's so gorgeous that they want to put him in a diamond surf video. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody check, hey. Check out each other's gear first. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. You can't you can't have Linda on this on this trip without her contributing here. She wants to, well, buddy check, Bob. Okay, cool. Oh, you got one of those Sony devices too. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, the beach dive. I got two PCs, and this is my beach dive, and the other one set up for. It's a ceremonial thing, man. Oh wait, I right, take a picture here. You guys, I guess I'm old equipment. You guys are gonna have to go in. And Turn my air on. I can get it if I go in the water. Turn my air on, Billy. <laughs> Okay, let's see. When you do this, sometimes the best part of the whole dive could have been if you'd saved that breath of air, right? Right, Ray? <laughs> yeah, but I always go with the fact that old as forgetful as I am, I forget to turn it on, and guess what? I've done that. Yeah. So well, I always why, turn it on. <laughs> what you should do before you turn it on is suck on it. That makes sure the diaphragm is intact. Yeah, well, I always do all that, yeah. All right, I'm ready to go. You guys you ready? Got you, you, got you, ready? Yeah. you already got your tank on. Oh, Absolutely. Man. Here, I got these batteries. Batteries. No batteries. No batteries? I got a still camera. You want me to go get a picture? Yeah. Okay. Picture him, just like that. Okay. Just hold on for a second. Press here, go forward. You want your pin on before you get down here? Oh, no problem. We can put them on right there. Oh, shit, I forgot my weight belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <here. laughs> Right there. Okay, we can trade places. This one? Yeah. Hand it over here. I'll get it. God damn it. Here. Here. Sure, I can get down there and get it. Alright, jump down again. Okay, okay I'll get the, the fins with the springs. You didn't get that on film, did you? <laughs> Ray, did you get that on film? No, sir. I think you did. Kurt, did you get that on film? Yes, sir. What? The, 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 the fins with the springs off, are they right there? Yep. I can oh, edit anything. Thing. I can edit anything. Hand me, hand me those things over here. No worries. No, no hurry. I'll, I'll make sure it's good. Ah,
Okay. Okay. Oh, you got it? No. Have fun. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> 